if it's not addressed towards me like then it it's not shaping the video your girl is back again with another story time if you know my channel hey girl hey and if you're a returning subscriber i don't even have to say anything because you know what's up i know what's up we know what's up and that's some way that's some way that's on period and mary had a little lamb as y'all can see by the title of the video today's story time is going to be about the time i doubled back on a friendship and why i regret it y'all before we get into today's video i do have to ask y'all something do y'all see something Y'all remember when we used to do this? But no, for real. Do y'all notice anything different about your girl? Any, anything, any, anything? Yeah. Shout out to Anna Louisa for sponsoring today's video. They sent me over a few pieces and y'all, I am absolutely obsessed. So I had to show y'all. So I got a necklace, some earrings, and then I also got a third pair of earrings. And y'all, do y'all see how that's just shine bright like a diamond? Do y'all see how that's just glistening? In the sunlight, yeah, baby, it's giving quality, giving very, very expensive, but their pieces are very affordable. All of their designs start out at $39. And if you don't like them or if something happens, they do make it very easy for you to exchange. And also, y'all, they do have a two-year warranty on all their pieces. So if something happens to your jewelry, they have a warranty, baby. So yeah, let me show y'all a little close-up of this. This is the first piece that I got. It has diamonds going all around the side, and it has a little diamond in at the bottom of it. Again, y'all, they do have free warranty on all of their items for up to two years. Yeah, y'all see that shine. <laughs> y'all see that. Now look at the necklace, baby. It's just giving quality. All of their pieces are tarnish free, so they can last for years. I got this jewel right here because my favorite color is sage green but my birthstone is emerald green so i thought this was a perfect mix and y'all know gold just look really good on brown skin so that's why i also got this one and then i've got these earrings to go with it this is not a set y'all but they do have bundles you can get matching bundle sets on their website they have rings bracelet earrings anything you need any type of design y'all they have it on their website and all of their pieces start off at $39, so it's very, very affordable, although it's looking real expensive, baby. And if you're in the United States, they do have free shipping, but if you're outside the U.S., it's okay, y'all, because their shipping is very, very affordable. I will link them down below, so make sure y'all get y'all some jewelry, check them out. And without further ado, y'all, let's go ahead and hop into this video. So y'all already know in order for any of my story times to make sense, I have to give y'all a little backstory. So if you're not new here, you... Well, if you're not new here, you probably can skip to this portion of the video because I'm going to give y'all the backstory of how I met this said individual. But if you were day one, you're going to remember her from this story time. I think I called her or I named her the ungrateful and that story time. So this is a continuation of that story because for some reason, somehow, my heart just told me to forgive her and it was BS, y'all. Y'all, I was trying to be cute over there in the sun to make the jewelry glisten, but baby... I can't do it. It was too hot. But let's get back to the story. So basically, Hot Bruff was one of those people that could meet somebody by tomorrow. And I'm saying by tomorrow because she ain't even met the person yet. She's anticipating to meet the person and she gonna call them friend. Like she just throws around the word friend. I know y'all know those people that will call anybody their friend. I take the word friend very seriously. Like in order for you to be a friend or a best friend, definitely your best friend. I have to we have to be locked in for a minimum of like five to six years. And at this point in my life, I don't think I'm going to have any more best friends. I have two best friends that we've been friends for over 10 years. And that's just going to be that. But anywho, who, me and Hot Bruff, we were really close at the time. And anybody she would introduce me to and be like, hey, Asia, this is my friend. I would take it literal. I'd be like, okay, this is her friend. She has probably known this person for years. But y'all, that is not the case. I will always find out that she just met the person after they burnt me. I'll be like, hot bro, why you didn't tell me that she wasn't going to pay me back? Like, why you let me put everything on my tab? Knowing she wasn't going to pay me back. And she'd be like, oh, I didn't know that. And I'll be like, how long you know her, hot bro? And she'll be like, oh, I just met her last month. And I'm just like, well, of course you didn't know her, but you calling her friend. Like, she was just one of those per people, y'all. And I have been burnt by multiple people that she has put me in contact with and this is one of them 
but anywho um me and the ungrateful like i told y'all in the last story we did have a little bit of history but not a lot like we were all from the same hometown so i would see her here and there um but we didn't go to the same school we really didn't hang around the same people other than the mutual which is hot breath or whatever fast forward um hot breath explains to me that the ungrateful is borderline homeless y'all and when i say borderline i mean she really is homeless like she's one argument one conversation one eye roll one bad day away from being homeless at this point and i believe i don't know if she told me this i think she told me this before hot breath was i was with hot breath one day and she was expressing to me ungrateful's business she used to tell her business a lot and she was basically saying something along the lines of oh she's about to be homeless this happened today and one day i just asked her i'm just like how is she about to be homeless like why did she move here like what's her situation or whatever so she goes into detail and she tells me that ungrateful moved to tallahassee with her best friend and three other girls she moved in with them and the plan was for her to help her get an apartment she was gonna save up some money get a job enroll into fsu until she got on her feet and this was her best friend we're gonna call the three best friends of the ungrateful we're gonna call them the mean girls because that's exactly what they were y'all let me close this because the sun is coming back to play hold on <laughs> Okay, we good. But yeah, we're going to call them the mean girls. She said that that was the plan. But when she moved to Tallahassee, y'all know how it is. When you depend solely on somebody, that's when you really find out who they were. So the ungrateful said as soon as she got to Tallahassee, the mean girls, they literally switched up on her. They started um, not helping her, asking her for money, asking her for rides, basically using her. And they knew that she didn't have anything. Like she didn't have money to fill the hunger in her stomach she didn't have money to put gas in her car she didn't have no hygiene products didn't have money to wash her ass like she didn't have money for this like basic living essentials she was down on her ass y'all she was just down bad at the time and um and i happened to live in the same apartment complex as the mean girls where was i staying at that time I'm trying to think of the name um avenue 29 it's by i-10 if you know you know so i was staying there the mean girls were staying directly in the apartment building behind me and at this time i was dating this guy and y'all already know how i am like when i'm with a when i have a boyfriend i'm obsessed i don't know if that's a tourist thing but i'm really obsessed y'all and i be with my man 25 8 like we're together all the time so this was around the time where i had a man keep that in mind y'all and then this was also around the time where me and the ungrateful and um me the ungrateful and hot bruff we were all hanging out a lot because like i said hot bruff was staying hot bruff stayed like 20 minutes away um the ungrateful stayed literally walking distance from me because she was living with the bean girls which happened to live in my apartment complex y'all so anytime i would hang out with hot bruff nine times out of ten the ungrateful would be there because like i said we were all mutuals and anytime the ungrateful was there it would just be bad vibes and sad stories y'all know those people that just drain the energy out of you that's kind of how it was anytime the energy was anytime we were around her around her and it was obviously because she was going through stuff so it was what it was fast forward i want to say this probably went on for about maybe like two weeks it was like one week of the hot rub telling me that she was borderline homeless until like the next week she called me and at this time me hot bruff me and ungrateful we probably had hung out maybe like three or four times before i got the call from hot bruff basically telling me that the ungrateful was locked out of the mean girl's apartment they were putting her stuff out i guess they got into an argument and she was officially like it was stamp y'all she was officially homeless so um i'm on the phone with hot bruv and she's telling me this girl's living situation and like i said y'all i didn't know her at the time we weren't friends we were literally just mutual associates from hot bruv or whatever so she's telling me this on the phone and i'm just like feeling really bad like i said y'all i can't be friends with everybody because when i meet people i treat them also like i've known them forever so at this time i know y'all thinking like asia why why would you even invite your home why would you even do this but y'all i was honestly feeling bad for the girl like i have never been in a situation like that before but i don't know y'all i i just felt it on my heart 
to open my homes up to her. And I had never done anything like this before. Like before this, I had never even met a, let a man stay with me, let alone a person I didn't know. So I'm like, um, hot bruv, I'll, you can go ahead and give me her phone number and I'll let her know that she can stay with me because I'm barely home. Like that was my main reason at the time, y'all, which thinking back, it was just like Asia you wasn't thinking like does your head make a noise when you shake it because I honestly was not thinking at the time y'all so I'm just like to give her my number let her know that she's welcome to stay with me because I'm rarely home like I said I had a boyfriend at that time and I basically lived in this man's nuts nut sacks y'all like anytime I had to go to class or take a shower or anything he would drop me off home I would get my books get my clothes he would drop me off to class after class I would be with my man like I was with him like all day, every day, outside of me going to class and work. So I was telling her, it would be no big deal. It would be like, we don't even live together. It would be like, you're just living in my apartment simply because I'm never home. If I'm not at work, school, I'm with my man. Like, <laughs> I'm never home. So I, I talked to her. I basically told her she can stay for one month um, free until she get her apartment, until she enrolls in school, until she basically gets on her feet, y'all. And um, that was that. And I know y'all gonna ask why she couldn't stay with Hot Bruff. She couldn't stay with Hot Bruff because Hot Bruff stayed on the opposite side of town, y'all. And the job that she was trying to get was closer to my house. Like the job that she ended up getting was like 10 minutes from my job. And um, Hot Bruff stayed like 30 minutes on the other side of town. And like I said, y'all, she was down bad. Like she couldn't afford to put gasoline, gasolina, in her car and so fast forward to week one of us living together like i said it would literally just be a high and by situation y'all i would literally um go there take a shower get ready for class go to class go to work after that my boyfriend would pick me up and then that would be that it was just really a high and by type of situation but fast forward to the second week my man must have made me mad at this time because i was home all that week and all that week um me hot bruff and the ungrateful we were going out keep in mind anytime we would go out to eat or anything we were paying for her food y'all because looks wasn't paying for like we was paying for it keep keep all of this in mind y'all if she needed to like get gas or if she needed any little thing um of course she would say that she would, was gonna pay us back but she never did but we would give her um you know whatever she needed that was like basic living essentials we would give that to her but during this um week i just remember us hanging out like every day i don't know what boyfriend did to me but asia was home all this week fast forward to i remember that weekend and we were in my room and we had went to get ice cream y'all and we had like a really deep deep conversation and she was expressing like what even made her want to move she said she went through a bad breakup with a serial cheater and she was just telling me all the crap that he put her through and this is a little quick interlude from the story y'all if you go back and watch the main story i'm not gonna go in detail about everything because like i said this is backstory for the backstory you have to go back if you want all the details you got to go back to watch this video right here but basically y'all um back like i want to say I, this happened in 2017 i graduated in 2015 so this was 2014 back in 2014 so three years prior to this i casually very briefly dated her boyfriend and at the time i did not know they were dating i did not know that he was a serial cheater me and him we went on two dates and we touched lips y'all like we and that was it like we just briefly dated shortly after that the boy went off to school and i was out of his mind or whatever and once we moved in together um that's when i discovered that this was her long-term boyfriend of course by the time i went off to school i did know that she dated him but i didn't know how long they dated like i said I didn't really keep up with her we had one one mutual friend and that was that but at some point i don't recall when i learned but at some point i did learn that that was her man or whatever and i'm just like okay this is the second week of us living together and in the second week me and her i can obviously see us being friends and us being getting really close together because in this one week we had got really close like she was telling me all her problems y'all know me i'm an open book i'm telling her my business and i'm like all right i don't even want the friendship to get too far before i do not mention this before i don't want i don't even want the friendship to get too far and not mention this because i don't ever want her to find out through somebody else and at the time y'all like i said it wasn't a big deal just simply because 
I didn't know her when this was her man. Like we didn't, we didn't know each other. This happened three years prior when I was in high school. But anyway, she's in the middle of telling me how the breakup was and how she would catch him cheating and he was doing all of this crazy stuff. And the man was just, <laughs> y'all, the man was very audacious. Like he was real, real bold. So she's telling me all of this. And at the time I was just like, I just came out of nowhere, y'all, because I felt the need to tell her because I just wanted to clear my conscience just in case later they get back together or somehow, some way she's back in communication with this man and she doesn't know that we ever dated or whatever. So I just wanted to tell her. So I'm like, Hey, um, back in like 2014, me and him, we went on a few dates and he went off to college and that was that. And then she kept asking me like, were we intimate and like, did we have relations and how did we even connect and blah, 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 blah. And I basically told her he swiped up on my, he will always swipe up on my um, Snapchats and I don't know how we got each other on Snapchat, but he will always swipe up on my Snapchats and he asked to take your girl out. And I said, yeah, we went on a few dates and it was right before he was about to go off to college. And that was just that or whatever. But she kept asking like a whole bunch of questions about the situation. I thought it was going to be a quick, just me clearing my conscience. Like, hey girl, didn't know that he was your man at the time. Did not know that y'all was actively dating at that time. Didn't know y'all was dating for five years and he was cheating on you. But I do want to let you know, back in 2014, we briefly dated and that was it. I thought that was going to be just simple y'all and we were gonna continue with our dialogue but no homegirl started asking me all types of questions she wanted like dates times and she wanted details and i'm like well maybe some of our messages are still on facebook but this is old so at this time that let me know like maybe they still had some dealings or she still had love for him at the very minimum at that time um, but anyway, y'all, after that, there was no arguments, no disputes. I told her about the situation. We continued to talk about just life and just other things. And through the weeks of us living together, by the third week, um, she had got a job. And I want to say by this time, again, we're all going out to clubs, going, it was like homecoming at past. We were going to events together, going to the beach together, just doing homegirl stuff, y'all. We're just doing friend stuff and hanging out. Um, a lot and by this point she's doing much better she done got her first chin chang chang she got her first check um and then my other home girl i don't know if we're gonna give her name we just gonna call her other home girl i had another home girl that was dealing with a situation where her roommate just up and left her and it wasn't a student housing apartment it was all on one lease so if she didn't find another roommate quick she was going to be responsible for that portion of the rent and she ain't really have it like that y'all so of course i put two and two together the ungrateful need somewhere to stay because staying with me is not going to be a forever thing and then we also have my one friend that's needing a roommate so me the ungrateful and hot bro we went to my other homegirl's apartment we let her see the room we let her tour the house or whatever and she was just like yeah how much it is to move in the rent was really cheap at the time y'all because like i said this was back in 2017 so i think her the price of rent was like 300 dollars. like if you couldn't afford that you don't need to be alive like it's 300 dollars so she ends up moving into my other friend's um, apartment. And of course, me and the ungrateful, we help her move in. Um, she's saving up her checks. Of course, she's getting furniture for her her room or whatever. And everything is going great. Me, the ungrateful, my other friend, like we're all friends and going to events at this time. I recall her birthday had passed by. We had a whole, I'm not going to put the pictures in here because I would literally just have to blank out everybody's face. So it don't make sense to put it in here. But y'all, we had a whole photo shoot but this girl with her other friends back home, even though we didn't know where these friends were when her stomach was on E, but we had a whole photo shoot with her previous friends and the friends, my friends and hot bruv and my other home girl or whatever, like we was getting real, real close. But after like two weeks of her living with my other home girl, I started noticing that the relationship became very like one-sided. Like I'm always calling, I'm always texting like, I don't know it was just weird like when you were staying with me sucking up my electricity and uh, my oxygen and my food you didn't have a problem texting hey can I eat this can I have this can I have like you didn't have the problem with blowing my phone up but once you start getting yourself together the relationship just became very one-sided but like I said y'all 
um i just chopped it up to she was busy felt some type of way about it but i never like i'm not an argument of or a combative person y'all so i never really like, expressed it to her i'm just like okay that's weird and me and her personally we stopped hanging out we wasn't hanging out as much around this time the second week of her living in the new apartment um that me and hot bruv helped her that connected her with my other homegirl or whatever we weren't hanging out that much but as a group we would hang out um but fast forward i want to say this is probably still in week two of her having her own place i called her one day because around this time y'all i was carless <laughs> i was very much carless because i had totaled my uh car around this time so i asked her the holidays was coming up i asked her like hey um are you going um home for the holidays because like i said we were all from the same place i'm like hey could you give me a ride um i'll give you gas money or whatever because y'all i didn't have a ride to get back home for thanksgiving so i asked her that and she was just like yeah i'm going home and no you can't have a ride and i remember this vividly because i was just baby i was baffled i was just like wait who, who are you talking to like you talking to me crazy like this after all after all finish the sentence y'all already know what i'm about to say so that happened or whatever didn't cuss her out didn't say any ill thing ill things about her i just hung up the phone and i'm just like all right you acting different um i blocked her um contact number and i'm like all right you're not gonna ever have to hear from me or ask me something because i don't ask anybody for anything so if i do ask you for something and the answer is no knowing i don't ask anybody for anything but my man and my mama those are the two exceptions oh it'd be just no you don't ever have to hear from me again so fast forward y'all to i want to say maybe like a it was probably a few days after that y'all know when you and two people are no longer friends everybody and their mama is asking you the infamous question why y'all not cool no more what happened between you and ungrateful what happened she was ungrateful but anyway they're asking like what happened between you and her and anytime somebody would ask me this at the time y'all i would kind of just be like i don't know like i because i honestly did not know like i didn't know why she said no she didn't give me an explanation um we didn't have any arguments or anything i just i was just baffled i was taken back and um i just i didn't know even our mutuals hot breath was unclear as to why we weren't cool no more my other friend that she was living with was unclear and then one day um my the mutual friend she calls me well she facetimed me and she was like asia and i'm like what she was like, you slept with the Ungrateful's man? Like, you slept with her her first love? And I'm like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? And she was like, I asked her why y'all not cool or why y'all no longer talking no more. And she was like, she can't be cool with somebody that effed on her ex. And I'm like, first of all, he was like, I didn't know her when I was talking to her ex that was her current boyfriend that was cheating on her and then second of all you didn't have the same moral compass when you were hungry and you were sucking up my food and electricity like why didn't you have oh because you was hungry that's why you didn't have this you know you didn't have this um care about any of that and so now and y'all i was honestly super confused about the situation just simply because we never like after that situation, the day that me and her, I came clean and told her like, hey, um, me and da, da da had a past, didn't know he was cheating on her and he was a serial cheater, didn't know anything about any of that. Like I found all that out on the same day or whatever. There was no um, animosity between us. Like we were still cool after that. Like we were still hanging out. She was still using me. Like there was nothing, nothing going on. But like I said, um, I didn't really care to like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't really cared to clear it up. Like, it's not like you saying Asia don't have no edges. Like, if you said that, I would have cleared it up. But if you're just saying like Asia was sleeping with my man, like I don't, I don't care. Like, I've been hearing rumors like that since the end of time. It was one of those situations, so I didn't feel the need to clear it up. I didn't say anything ill. I just thought it was weird how as soon as you got back on your feet you all of a sudden had a problem with this and we just weren't even friends so it didn't make any sense to me but anyway y'all i didn't clear anything up that happened back in 2017 we stopped being friends back in like 20 
oh, excuse me, back in 2018. Um, and at that point, I was just like, I got to be careful who I give my time, give my energy, who I'm genuine to because everybody's not genuine. But anyway, fast forward all the way up until, was this? Yeah, all the way up until 2023. Um, no, not 2023, 2022. I moved to Texas back in 2021. And when I first moved here, y'all, I joined um, this Houston group chat to make friends. Like I told y'all, I didn't have any friends when I first uh, moved here. So it was called like Houston Women Like Link Up. It was basically for you to find like like-minded women to like hang out and like, you know, explore the city with. But y'all know how I did that. Instead, I hopped on the dating apps to start <laughs> exploring with, you know. But anyway, I hopped on there and y'all, I never connected with anybody. I never reached out to anybody because a lot of people that I would see on there, they was just giving a whole bunch of bad vibes and like sad stories and y'all know that could be emotional emotionally training so i never connected with anybody on this facebook app but i would facebook chat but i would occasionally go in there and just like read because sometimes i'll be thinking about going to little like events i like dressing up they be having like church events brunch events and sometimes i'll be feeling bold like maybe i want to step out and like put myself out there but then I don't know. I just end up backing out because of just past experiences, y'all. But one day back in 2022, this is um, a year later. I had already been in Texas for a year. I'm in there and I see a post from the ungrateful and she's saying, hi, I'm the ungrateful and I'm looking for somebody to use. Not, I'm joking y'all. She ain't said that, but she did say, hi, I'm ungrateful. I just moved to Houston, Texas. I'm staying in the Northeast area and I have, um, I forgot what else she mentioned. She mentioned something about like her pets and her family and her interests and her hobbies. So if anybody wanted to link or hang up, like she's down or whatever. So I see her post in there. And like I said, by this time, it's five, y'all. It's it's five years later. I don't have any bad blood or I don't feel any ill against her or towards her just simply because this happened years ago back in college. Like I see it and I bat my eyes. I'm just like, okay, she's in Houston now. Don't even think anything of it, y'all. Um, fast forward to January of this year, um, I get a follow request from her on Instagram and now it's six years, six years has passed y'all. And when I see this follow request, I'm just like, oh, like, should I follow her back? Like, is she trying to play restitution? Like, is she trying to say sorry? Like, what's really good? Like, why are you just randomly following me on um instagram and also keep in mind y'all pre previously back in 2017 we never had each other on instagram but we did have each other on facebook and snapchat and of course i had her phone number so she was blocked after my friend let me know that she was telling people that she cut me off because i had relations with her ex which one never happened and two <laughs> nice to have morals now but anyway it never happened i y'all i digress um so i go ahead and follow her back because i don't have any bad energy or hate in my heart towards her this happened years ago like we were in college we we're baby we were kids so um that's that a few days after me following her back the girl goes and starts spamming spamming my instagram pictures so i'm like all right she trying to show love she's spamming the instagram pictures at this point i hit my our mutual friend up and i'm like hi bro you you need a TikTok? I'm joking, y'all. But I'm like, Hopra, oh, what's going on? Like, I'm sending her a screenshot of the ungrateful spamming me and doing all of this stuff. And then she was just like, um, I don't know. That's a bit odd. Um, but she's cool. Like, maybe she's just on a new path and she just wanted to follow you. Like, maybe maybe it's nothing it's not that deep or whatever so i'm like yeah maybe you're right but i do think it's a bit peculiar that she's spamming my picture i haven't talked to her for years we didn't really leave off on the best terms um like i said never cursed the girl out never went back and forth with her after the situation i literally just i let it be like that was just that or whatever um a day after she was spamming my pictures on instagram i get this dm right here and in this DM, she's apologizing and she's saying that she has grew closer 
to Christ now and she doesn't have any hate in her heart and she really feels bad how our friendship let out and I was a very genuine person and she appreciates um, me and she appreciated our friendship mind you at the time y'all all of this stuff happened with her in the span of like two months like we didn't really know each other anyway so it was bad judgment for me to even offer my home to her but anyway um she's going into oh let me let me back up let me go ahead and back up a little bit remember the friend that I told y'all my mutual friend I told y'all when she needed somewhere to stay we told her that she had a, a room available or whatever that mutual friend when them two um they didn't have any arguments no drama nothing bad happened one day the ungrateful just up and left like she up and left and she left a whole bed in there she left clothes in there she left stuff in there she didn't tell anybody that she was um leaving or whatever and that was just that so she again mind you she was friends with my other homegirl which was her roommate at the time and she up and left the unit the way it was didn't tell anybody that she was leaving now my friend was back in the same predicament this happened like i want to say like three months after her moving in she was back in the same situation again having to abruptly find a roommate to move in the unit because she, the girl just up and left and didn't pay her rent the last month before she left so this is not the this is also the i'm not the only one that she done we don't know how many people that she done burnt y'all and used but keep in mind this is not the only person that i know that she has done this to but back here we back in 2024 y'all in january um i see the message or whatever and the first time when i seen it i read the whole thing y'all and i kind of just slept on it because i'm just like i don't know how i feel about it like I don't know a lot has transpired in the past but at the same time i honestly didn't have any hate in my heart it's six years later we grown i'm not the same person i was back in, in 2017 2018 like let bygones be bygones like it happened so i responded back to her and i'm like it's cool um i forgive you and also i apologize y'all Ask me why I apologize. No reason at all. But anyway, I apologized to her back telling her that I was sorry how things um, ended. I feel like it could have just been communicated a little better and it could have been squashed or whatever. Um, at the end of the conversation, we're literally just, y'all, we're going back and forth and we catching up. I'm telling her about my journey in Texas and my job and like, I'm just telling her about everything. And she's telling me about um, what she does. And at the time, um, she was saying that she was doing some type of marketing thing where it was making her $10,000 a month. And y'all know, <laughs> I like money. So I was like, girl, put me on. What is making you 10 k a month or whatever? So she started saying, she tells me the marketing company, y'all, which ended up being telemarketing. It was, it was a joke. <laughs> but she tells me the marketing company or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely going to look into it. And we end our conversation off by saying, um, well, she suggested that we go out one of these days to get lunch or go to church together because she said she was very um, close with Christ, y'all, and she's on her spiritual journey. So she said, can we get church, um, go to church or get brunch one of these Sundays or whatever? And I'm like, yeah, we can definitely have a good old Sunday fun day, but I'm not taking this serious. You know how you be telling people you're going to link them and you know you're not ever going to link them like they never going to see you. And that's what I was honestly thinking. y'all. I didn't think that the girl was going to follow up. I thought she was just talking. But that following week, that following Friday, she hit me and was like, let's go to Chapman and Kirby this Sunday or whatever. Um, and she tells me her church, our churches were on two different sides of town. So I went to my church. She went to her church. After that, that's where we met up at, um, well, I met up at her apartment complex, y'all. And the first thing I say when I see the girl is, and this should have been a, this should have been a slight red flag right there where I should just be like, uh-uh. Let me let me not let this opportunist back in my life. But anyway, y'all, as soon as she seen me, she was like, dang, girl, you don't got big. And it's just like, I know, like, I walk through doors every day. Like, I know my back wide. Like, you ain't have to tell me that I don't got big. But anyway, I'm just like, uh-uh. Like, why people do that? But anyway, y'all, she said that I got big or whatever. And I'm like, yo, girl, I know I'm, I'm the one eating. Like, I, I'm, I'm aware or whatever. And then we just start um, talking and like joking or whatever. And she was telling me how she was on um, 
oh Zimpic trying to put me on it and y'all we was just doing a whole lot of chit chat I hop in the car with her and we pull up to Chapman and Kirby but before we get out the car Chapman and Kirby has like one of the most expensive parking i don't know if it was an event this day or what was going on but typically their parking is like twenty dollars but for some reason they wanted to charge thirty dollars for the parking directly across the street from them and this is like a only in houston thing because it doesn't make sense to me y'all it's not a parking garage it's literally a plaza a plaza that they own the land to and they charge you thirty dollars a car um to park or whatever or you can do like the pay and park by the hour or whatever but anyway, she didn't want to pay that, so she rolled past that, and we're literally rolling around the block for a while, and mind you, this is a brunch, but it's a late brunch. It's probably, we didn't get there, we probably got there around three something, but we didn't actually go in until four. So, um, I just recall us rolling around the block, y'all. She looks at me, and she's like, uh, should I park here? You think I'm gonna get told? And I'm like... I don't know. Like, I don't know, y'all. Mind you, she's telling me this directly in front of a sign that says Tow Away Zone. Tow Away Zone. A red sign. Tow Away Zone. And then there's a sign right beside it that has, like, the parking pay thing or whatever. So, I'm like, I don't know, y'all. Because I don't learn my lesson. And y'all can let me know how y'all feel about this. Like, it's been times in the past where someone has asked me if they can park at my apartment complex. And they have got told. And if I say yes, I feel like... It's on me. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to eat that. Y'all can let me know how y'all feel about it. But anyway, ever since college, because in Tallahassee they told they told pretty much everywhere. So when people ask, "Do you think I should park here?" I always say, "I don't know." Definitely, if it's not my car, because if it's my car, it's up to my discretion. I'm not gonna let you decide because are you gonna pay? So I decide. But it was her car, so I'm just like, I don't know. Mind you, y'all, tow a tow a zone sign directly in front of us so i'm like i don't know girl I'm like mm. and she's just like yeah because these pumps hurt my feet i don't feel like walking all the way down the block or whatever and i'm like well usually when i go to chapman we literally just we pay the parking lot right here like we pay and then i even offered to split the um the parking with her because like i said it was a little steep it was 30 dollars um and we didn't know how long we were going to be there which we should have known because if anybody has been to any sunday brunch spot in houston it's an all-day affair we got there at four y'all we didn't leave to 11 and we really did have a good time like we catched up a little there uh we were mingling with people it was it was a nice time y'all um fast forward to at the Chapman and Kirby, we're leaving, and it's like 11 o'clock, and we're walking, and y'all, <laughs> the ungrateful car is nowhere to be found. Her car is not there, nowhere to be found, and she's kind of in denial. Like, we done spent the block like three times, and she's like, did I park here? Did I? You, you did. You did. You park. You the you parked here. She's like, I ain't parked here because where my car? I'm like, you parked here, y'all. And the crazy thing was, I remember this day like it was yesterday because I didn't even have that many drinks. Like I think I had like two lemon drops, but I was good. But homegirl was acting like she had amnesia. Like she was like, I ain't parked. I'm like, you did park here. We circled around the block like three times, y'all. At this point, I had to be a foot. Like I took my shoes off and everything because my feet was killing me. And she once it finally hits her, it sits in her soul that she indeed <laughs> she indeed um got told or whatever um and like i said i was under the influence when i'm under the influence it ain't no way i can be mad y'all so i'm just kind of like laughing about it not laughing at her just laughing at the situation or whatever so she catches the attitude and she was like man i can't believe this how much do you think the tone tote is gonna be and i'm like i never got told in houston before so i do not know but i have heard people saying crazy amounts for toes like it just depends or whatever so we go back to chapman and we ask the um well, not Chapman. We go to the parking people across from Chapman. We ask them what's the tow company. They give us a tow company. She calls them and then she confirms that yes, they got her car. The little um bug, it, it's up there. They got it or whatever. I called the Uber because I had to go back that way anyway. My car was parked at her house. Um, she gets in the house. I go home. I was like, I'm gonna text you when I get home. Mind you, y'all, we didn't even exchange numbers yet. I was literally only connecting with her on Instagram. Fast forward to like two days after that, she texts me and she was just like, guess what? And I'm like, what? And she was like, you know my car uh, was $400 to get out the tow, right? And I'm like, 
oh my gosh, really? Like, why was that? And she's like, oh, that's what I'm trying to figure out. And I'm kind of like, I didn't say this, y'all, but I'm kind of thinking like, why are you on the phone with me? You need to be on the phone with them trying to figure it out. Like, if you don't know why your car was so much or whatever. And she's like, no, I didn't get the car yet. Um, I didn't get my car out yet. Um, but I'm just really trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And y'all, when I seen that message, I'm just kind of like, like, what? What you mean? What you gonna do? You gonna pay to get your car out or whatever? But I'm gonna have to look back at the um messages because I don't recall what I said at this point. But I, if I'm paraphrasing y'all, I think I said something along the lines of that's crazy. And y'all know when somebody say that's crazy, that's just crazy. Like that's all you can say. So I'm like, damn, that's crazy or something along the lines of that's wild or something like that y'all so she writes me back and she's just like um i was tr trying not to ask you this but can you contribute um towards the toe can you give me half for the toe and i'm kind of like i was i'm not gonna hold you initially i was gonna be like yeah i can give you half but at the same time y'all why didn't you go get your car? Before she even said anything, I knew exactly why. Like, it's two days after the fact, and you still haven't picked your car up. So I know for a fact you're incurring more fees by leaving your car up there so long. If you probably would have got your car back that next morning, it probably would have only been like $100 or $200. But you're incurring these extra fees by leaving your car up there. But I didn't say that, y'all, because I have been told in the past, not in Houston, so I don't know how it works, but I've been told in the past, and I know that they charge more the longer you leave your car up there, or they have, like, times, like, after-hour times where it's more if you get your car at a certain time. So I'm kind of already putting two to two together, two, two and two together. Why well, can't you say together? Two and two together, y'all. But I still sat on this message because part of me, the dumb part of me, really thought about saying, yeah. I'll go ahead and give her, but then the other part of me is just like, well, we just starting to connect again, and it's really not my fault that her car got told, because when she asked, I said, I don't know, like, it's up to the driver's discretion, not mine, so I'm like, I don't got it, so I'm like, I don't got it, and y'all know this is, this is tax season, and I'm a, I'm an entrepreneur, like, tax January, February, March, April, this is the worst time of the year. Like I had to pay back taxes. So I'm just like, oh girl, I don't, I don't got it. I just seen what I owe for my taxes, blah, blah, blah. I ain't even know yet, y'all. I'm just, I'm bluffing or whatever. So I'm like, girl, I don't got it. And she was just like, well, can you give me something like whatever you have towards it? And I don't recall, I said no, y'all, but I said it in so many ways. Like, I ain't just come out sh straight and be like, no, which I should have did like she did back in 2017. But like I said, there's no hate on my heart. I'm not, I was not mad about the situation. I was just kind of like, I don't feel like I have to. I'm not entitled to give her anything towards the toe. Cause one, if it was me, oh, excuse me. I wouldn't be asking for anything back. Definitely if I'm the one not to be shady or anything, y'all. But this was also the same um, person that was telling me that she was bringing in 10K a month from her, her side job. So how are you asking little old me? To contribute to this tow um that i ain't do nothing but sit in the passenger passenger seat of like if anything you should be playing me because i bless your car like what so i'm like no um honestly i don't have anything to contribute towards the car or whatever and she was just like are you serious i'm gonna put the the message in here she writes this long elaborated um message talking about um if it was, if the shoes were reversed, she definitely would have gave me some money, blah, 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 blah. And then after that, y'all, I, I didn't respond because obviously it wasn't me. Like, this was a sign that I needed. This was a sign right then and there. And that was at the beginning of the year, y'all. That was back in January, the middle of January. So I already knew, I already knew that was a sign. Like, I was already asking God in 2024. Please remove people and show people that's not supposed to be in my life, that they're not supposed to be in my life, and that situation happened, and I just did not um, text her back after that, y'all, because like I said, what am I supposed to say to that? Like, you feel very entitled. You just came back in my life. I don't have any emotional attachment towards you, and this was obviously a clear sign that I was not supposed to even be back in cahoots with her. But anyway, y'all, that's not even the icing on the cake, because that didn't even make me mad. I'm just like, oh, all right. That's fine, but the girl took it upon herself 
the one that I'm that's changed so much she took it upon herself to put the whole situation she didn't expose my name but um I knew that it was she was it was me y'all because somebody tagged me and it was a mutual friend because obviously I went back and told a mutual friend like girl could you believe that she wanted me to pay half of a toll and I just I barely know you again like let me what no so I told the mutual friend so the mutual friend told me that it was she put it on Facebook and like I said she was still blocked so I would have never seen this if the mutual friend would have never screenshotted and sent it my way but anyway she put the whole thing on Facebook um basically um getting people's opinions which I guess I'm technically doing right now I'm not getting y'all opinions y'all can comment on if y'all feel like I was wrong or right but it was done it's done like I, I i don't i don't really care but anyway she was just putting on facebook trying to get people attention people were commenting saying that i was broke and, da, 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 and, I'm, and i'm like what like it's always the people that's asking for money projecting and saying that you're broke because you feel like i don't feel entitled to giving her any money but anything anyway y'all if it's not addressed towards me like then it it's not shape because it's not addressed towards me so anyway i seen the messages seen the comments or whatever i read it and it was just really a key key because how are y'all saying that it's giving broke and all of this other stuff and y'all don't even know like the full story the full history or anything and i didn't want to um block her just so i can comment on there and get into it because y'all already know how facebook is facebook put everybody in your business it literally will be like asia commented on the ungrateful post and then it'll be be on the main uh timeline and i don't even do that y'all but yeah so that's what just blew me over the top that we got into one little incident one and it was it wasn't even that big of a deal i was already gonna cut her even after even if she would have never wrote back that long paragraph i still wasn't gonna respond y'all because i feel like that's a clear indication that you probably haven't changed much and that you feel entitled to be asking me to share a portion of it but anyway y'all that's the story time on how i learned my lesson not to double back when it comes to relationships uh, i'm not saying nobody don't deserve a second chance but in this situation it, it was no reason for me to befriend her back again or even accept her apology like it, it wasn't necessary but i love y'all don't forget to like comment and subscribe and also i keep forgetting to promote travel babes y'all but if y'all do not know your girl is going to bali indonesia this summer i'm going to my dream vacation and i do have two uno dos two two more spots left if any one of y'all are interested in filling those spots if y'all want to go please dm me y'all i'll have my instagram down below we're going to be staying in a 10 bedroom luxurious villa we're going to be doing all the infamous bali things the bali slide the temples the monkey sanctuary the elephants the rice fields the tent y'all whatever whatever when you think of bali Whatever comes to mind, we're doing it. We're doing all the Bali things. So if y'all would like more information about it, y'all can obviously click on my website or the Emmy girl and we can talk about filling those two spots. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I love y'all and I'll see y'all in my next video. Peace.